Yes. So we are back in action. Actually, both the Falcons and the Saints, because they're getting ready for a rematch, their game to begin on Sunday. And this time, of course, they're in New Orleans. So it's going to look a little different from week one. Week one, it was Marcus Mariota. It was Jameis Winston. So that very interesting, you know, turn of events, if you will. And so, of course, the Saints pulled that out last minute. That was one of those kind of heartbreakers. Fast mm -hmm. forward to now week 14. And we are at a point in place where, hmm, what's going to happen with these new quarterbacks? So we're going to focus on the Falcons quarterback first. Desmond Ritter is what you guys have all been clamoring for. But what is it exactly that you're clamoring for? Like, what is it exactly, Jarvis, that you think people want to see in terms of knowing what is Desmond Ritter made of? What does he bring to the table? What does that look like? And I, I think that one of the things that I've always kind of admired about Desmond Ritter, you know, once I got a chance to you know talk to him in, in the uh, uh, rookie mini camps and spring training and everything like that, it was kind of just the confidence that he speaks with. Right. You know, though, I, you can kind of understand why he sold himself to the Falcons down there in the senior bowl. And a lot of teams were impressed by Desmond Ritter. And I think that in the Falcons, you you get that sense that this guy is confident, right? Yeah. And, and confident enough not only when things are going well, but right. confident enough to when th to, to to continue to have that confidence when you, things are going bad badly mm -hmm. for you. And obviously, as a rookie quarterback in the NFL, you got to be prepared to deal with some adversity. And I think yeah. that with the Tampa Bay kind of, you know taking the L they got took out taken out to the woodshed by the 49ers and indeed it, maybe maybe the glimmer of hope is a little bit brighter mm -hmm. <laughs> you know maybe five percent to maybe like nine percent chance to get into the playoffs or, or win the division so I think the, that's some of the things that I, I think that everybody's going to have their eye on right mm -hmm. how are you going to respond to that yeah. how is the team how is this team going to respond to being in that situation with the rookie are y'all going to support them by making plays or, or or going going out your way to make sure you do everything you possibly can to make sure you you support this guy because you know yeah marcus mariota yeah he had his issues but you know that you can count on him to bring that extra element that was able to make this one of the better rushing uh, football teams in the nfl so you're going to be looking for that what element that Desmond Ritter is going to be able to bring. And I think it's going to be throwing that deep ball and connecting with guys like Drake London and Alameda Zacchaeus and, and Cardero Hodge. I think that's what he's going to have to be able to bring. It's just a matter mm -hmm. of timing. And I think Arthur Smith is going to be working on that timing as they get that running game going and working in that play action. And if they're mm -hmm. able to do that, I think we'll get a good idea of what Desmond Ritter is going to be able to bring to this table going forward. Yeah, and I do think it's mental. I, I believe that the game will be fast for him. Obviously, yes. the Saints are going to do all kinds of things. Like they'll probably line up, and at the last possible second, they'll just switch. They'll switch their their scheme, right? Right. And to kind of confuse the rookie because hey, he probably has been studying. Oh, okay. Well, I see them lined up this way. This is what it means. So this is what I'm going to do. So they're going to do those kinds of things. They're probably going to come at him and, with blitzes to make him have to think fast. But I think. It may catch him off guard in the first half, but I wouldn't doubt that he could make the mental adjustments in the second half. That's the one thing we did not see in Marcus Mariota after seven years. We just still didn't see good decision making. So I think that's one area where, yeah, the game may be speedy for him initially, but it's going to slow down because of the way he thinks about the game and what his approach to the game is. And you know, the other piece there is this. We were talking about this earlier, the decisions that Nate McMillan made the adjustment in taking that time out to get the Hawks the win, right? And right. so this is a situation where as much as the Falcons fans have clamored for it, now that Arthur Smith has made that decision, I feel like we're not going to know until Sunday, but how good or bad is this decision based on what we might see Sunday? To be honest with you, like, I think it's a matter of the end result, right? You know, but I think that, you know, given why he made the decision, not necessarily because they were out for the playoffs, right. but I think that he said that these are exact words. This is a decision that was made for the short term and the long term, mm -hmm. because I figured I feel I really feel like Arthur Smith had seen enough of 
the missed throws, the overthrows, and, and just not being able to connect with his wide receivers and, and, right. and his tight ends and, mm -hmm. and running backs mm -hmm. out of the backfield. So I think that was, that was something that was a big yeah. piece that he made a decision. And also, yeah, of course, there was a part of it was part of, to be able to get a peek into your future, right? Mm -hmm. But now mm -hmm. that you're still trying to win games, that doesn't change his mindset, right? It's right. not like he's trying to tank for whoever, yeah. Will Anderson or whoever you want to say, um, throw name um, prospect that you want to be on your team. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that when you look at it, though, I, I feel like Arthur Smith is going to do everything in his power, like he did for Marcus Mariota to put him in good situations. And, and, and I believe there's no doubt in my mind mm -hmm. that he will come up with a game plan to make Desmond Ritter look good. And, right. and, and, I, and I don't think that New Orleans is, they're gonna make sure that he's gonna look bad. And I think that more than likely, just from a, as long as the, the game plan is, is succinct, and like we, we talk about those first uh, uh, set of scripted plays that that come that, uh, Arthur Smith comes out with, as mm -hmm. long as those things are in place and looks look like what they need to be, I'm fine. I'm totally fine with either way, and mm -hmm. I, and I want. I'm not going to discredit Arthur Smith if if Desmond Ritter has a bad game. That's that's just not. I don't feel like that's 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 the how I'm going to feel after the game if right. he doesn't have a good one. Yeah, to me, there's almost no bad thing that he can do unless it's pick six after pick six. Right. After yeah. Pick six. Yeah. That like Brock Osweiler or somebody yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, oh, gosh. Every time the ball <laughs> your hand, it ends up in yeah. the hands of somebody with black and gold on, that would be a bad look. But other right. than something that egregious, I just really can't say that there's anything else I can think of that would make it a bad look, because that's just what Arthur Smith is trying to do. He's trying to get a he's trying to get a look. Period. He's trying to get a look real time. So for me, mm -hmm. for a coach to take that chance, and we trust his decision-making process, I'm going to say I can't think of anything else that would make this a bad look for Arthur Smith. And, you know, you look at it as well and you say to yourself, you know, what would make it a bad look for Desmond Ritter? Like, what can he do in terms of his preparation, right? right. And what can he do for, exec for execution purposes? And for me, that's what it is. Like, right. if he's preparing and Dean Pease has, you know, had his defense kind of like going against him and kind of giving him certain looks or whatever, I mean, he's been accustomed to that. It's not like he hasn't been getting that all season now, maybe not on the, you know, level that the Saints, you know, front four are, right. but so some semblance thereof. Right, exactly. So I'm thinking for me, it's all about what is the biggest part of Ritter's success or failure on Sunday. And again, I'm looking for the mental. I'm just looking for if you do throw that pick early, do you bounce back? If you happen to do a pick six, do you bounce back? So that's what I'm looking at. And so the failure for me would only be if somehow he got in his own head and a, an early mistake was the rest of the was there for the rest of the game. And then it cost the Falcons the game. Yeah. And I think that that mental fortitude piece is very important right, when it comes to quarterbacking in, in the NFL, because we've seen Marcus Mario's kind of confidence mm -hmm. kind of wane a little bit. Mm -hmm. as as when they've lost when they've lost four, four out of the last five games and i think that when you talk about have a quarterback answering questions about you know hey it is what it is you know right. they have to make a decision you know those things those things mean something that means something yeah. if somebody's willing to to verbalize those things right after a loss so mm -hmm. uh, i think that i don't think that from a from a from a, st a confidence standpoint that arthur smith has shown Ritter to bring him into this situation on the road against mm -hmm. your, your your division rival with a a, a a very small chance of trying to you know win it stay mm -hmm. in this divisional race right. uh, as the season winds down. I I, I think for those reasons I, I'm not really too concerned about Ritter's confidence and, and that mental fortitude that I think that he's shown mm -hmm. since he stepped on out there in Flowery Branch on the field. Yeah. I think that's something that we're definitely going to continue to see regardless of what happens. Right. And, you know, here on this show, we talk about that and we'll keep you guys up to date on what's going on in Flowery Branch throughout the week. But we also have our eye on Dansby Swanson. But let's be honest, Jarvis, not just us. Locked on Sports Today has their eyes yes. on him as well, because this is yes. national news <laughs> because he could go to the Braves. He could go to the Dodgers. Or, of course, there could be a suitor whom we haven't even identified yet who could come in and swoop in the shortstop. So, of course, stop here to hear the latest and greatest, but also check out our guys at Locked On Sports Today because they'll react to the biggest stories of the day. They're going to tell you what their thoughts are on any and everything, just like we do. Now, we call it for the culture. They call it 
take of the day. But check them out. You check us out on Odyssey, the app. You check us out on YouTube as well as download wherever you, you download us, wherever you download your podcast. We appreciate it, but we will appreciate it even more if you do the same for Locked On Sports today.